Jagro there we have Patty with us today Patty Montella from USA and she lives in our Boon Ashram she came to Gurudev in 1995 and after 20 years of successful corporate career uh, in 1998 she left that and she became a full time art of living teacher so we will get to that part what motivated her to quit her corporate career and join art of living she is the first president of international association for human values USA and helped to launch it in Europe first western ds and teacher dynamism for self and nation and the first international director for youth programs of art of living the and media for the usa the first volunteer training program teacher or what we know as pre teachers training program so there are so many first and today she's a senior international faculty of art of living and international association association for human values she uh, she teaches happiness program uh, volunteer training program dsn tlex living well and project welcome home troops and silence course uh, she she became a best selling author in 2019 when she launched her book and uh, she has just authored the book recently i think mahashivratri she launched her book becoming unshakable wisdom learned on the journey to inner freedom and we all saw her uh, in the ashram she came gurudev launched her book gurudev she, she launched her book on mahashivratri day uh the day when the shiva tatwa is closest to the earth and he just looked at the book and he shook the book <laughs> but i'm sure patty has got a lot of patty uh, with her in her inner self she is she kept her unshakable smile on her face <laughs> and so there is so much to learn many of you were telling me in the comment section that we, we should definitely bring patty for her guru stories and it is going to be so much fun she is known for her humor So, Patty, do you have a copy of your book? Can we see the cover? I do. This is the book that was launched in India. Let's see. Wow. And um, by uh, Shri Shri Publications, and I launched it in the USA uh, last July, also in Guru Dev's okay. presence. So, can you tell us? Can you tell us a little bit more about this book? Sure. So. Many years ago, probably eighteen or more years ago now, one day Gurudev said to me, "Write a book." And I wasn't thinking about writing a book, although I've always written a bit ever since I was a young girl. And to tell you the truth, I didn't do anything. And then a year later, he said, "You haven't written anything. I would have done so much for you by now, but you don't have a book." And I really felt the pinch. So then I started writing. Uh, I felt inhibited that do can I really author a book? And I started writing articles for a website for women on feeling the fear and doing it anyway. And I got published. And I just wanted to feel comfortable as a writer to see if I really had what it takes. And I very proudly put together the entire. um a grouping of published articles for Gurudev handed it to him and he looked at me and had three words write a book he wasn't impressed with my published articles and my attempt to get out of having to sit down and keep the commitment to write an entire book so i did begin and i am really lucky because from the very first moment on the path i have kept a little journals and written down every anecdote things that he has said experiences i have had in his presence knowledge he has taught that may or may not be out there today and it will took years but i did finally finish it and last year well two years ago now on my 60th birthday he had told me hurry up and finish your book and so it took one more year and i finally finished it and it chronicles my journey from being a corporate executive i was a corporate executive for 20 years with american airlines and the saber corporation as corporate as you can get and when i met gurudev the very first day he said you will be a full time art of living teacher i had no idea what that meant i just found myself saying yes automatically i just was saying yes to anything he said and sure enough a year later i walked out of my career and moved to the german ashram as a full time teacher and the journey has been like this 
as it is for so many of us. There were times of extraordinary bliss, times that I thought this is so difficult living this lifestyle from the lavish lifestyle I was used to. And I thought, I don't know if I'm cut out for it, if I can do it. And all the time, Gurudev was right by my side, encouraging me, give me giving me wisdom, giving me space, giving me inspiration, holding my hand to get me to where I am today, to becoming unshakable. And so the book talks about that journey, the ups and downs that we all go through, and the doubts, the confusions, the insecurities, the wow factor. And it's filled with a lot of funny stories because that is something that um, we all have our own connection with Guru Dev, and mine is one of humor, uh, along with obviously great devotion. And the book offers 15 key wisdom lessons that I learned from Guru Dev that really shaped me into becoming who I am today. It's because I want these wisdom lessons to light the journey for others so that we can all understand it's not always going to be a bed of roses, but it is the devotion, it is the wisdom, it is the commitment that will help keep you on the path in the company of good people that, who lift you up when you're tripping a little bit as you walk the path. Yeah, and I'm sure if Gurudev is reminding you again and again to write a book, that means he wants everybody to read these lessons. If an enlightened <laughs> master is telling you to write a book, that means the message that you will be conveying, you have conveyed through your book, is something that he really intends it should reach everybody. So yeah. it, it, it's, it will, I'm sure it will be a pretty exciting experience to uh, read this book. And all of us who want to order this book, I will give a link in the description. You can click on the link. Uh, yeah, it's, it's on Amazon US and Amazon India. It's available. Uh, right. The book name is the, the book name is Becoming Unshakable with the tagline Wisdom Learned on the Journey to the Inner Freedom. Now she's currently working in uh, on another book of Gurudev, which is mainly for the Western audience, and she's uh, she's also creating some short films, some short humorous films around Gurudev and his knowledge. Currently, she is in India, locked down, locked in in Bangalore ashram due to the Corona lockdown situation. And I hope that you are liking this, Raji, in Bangalore ashram. Uh, of course. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, Patty, how did this whole thing started? How did you get to know about Gurudev and how, how you did your Art of Living course? Well, Digvijay, I had no idea what I was signing up for. It started, I'll tell you, I, especially after writing the book, I realized only then I'd been a seeker my whole life. I had done things in metaphysics. I had studied Native American traditions. I had taken a program called The Course of Miracles. I always had a lot of questions and being born and raised in the West and attending Catholic studies, it just didn't answer the questions that I had. So I had this wonder, does unconditional love exist? And is it real? And how can I find out more about unconditional love? And I also used to get this image of um, what I now know as a guru. I didn't know that's what it was at the time, of a man sitting on top of a mountain in deep reflection and meditation. And I would wonder about this person. So I was... Uh, a regional manager for American Airlines in Denver, Colorado at the time, very boring sounding. And I went to a client and I was meeting her for the first time in my business suit, my high heels and my briefcase and a flyer fell off her desk. And the flyer was about something called the Healing Breath Workshop. And this woman come to find out is very intuitive, a little bit psychic and she said, this flyer has been falling off my desk all day, and I don't think it's for me. I think it's for you. And I looked at it, and I thought, yeah, I think it is. Because I had been suffering from terrible migraine headaches. I lived in Dallas and worked at American and Sabre's corporate headquarters for so long. I had moved to Colorado for a change of pace, better fresh air. 
in the hopes of getting rid of these migraine headaches, but I didn't, they still persisted. And I had noticed that if I would take long, slow, deep breaths in, I could minimize the headaches and sometimes get rid of them altogether. So I had an inkling that there was some value in the breath, but I didn't, of course, know anything more about it. And nothing like this yoga, meditation, breath work was in the norm back then. You know, this was in the mid 90s, so early 90s. So when she said it's about the breath, I said, yeah, I think I need to learn to breathe more. I've been getting that message for a couple of years now. And to my surprise, I just signed up for the program on the spot, not knowing a thing about it because there were no websites back then. We didn't have any brochures, nothing. I just did it. And the day, first day of the course, I'll tell you the truth. I thought, I think I've made a big mistake. I don't belong here. I thought everything was a little weird when we did the first icebreaker. It was a little uncomfortable. Um, I wasn't sure that I was in the right place. And then I asked somebody on a break to be friendly. What do you do for a living? And what did they answer? He said, I'm depressed. That's what he does for a living. He's depressed. I thought, I got to get my money and get out of here. But then the teacher, my friend David, said, talked about the Sudarshan Kriya. And it sounded so intriguing that I thought, well, I paid the money. Let me stay. And of course, like all of us who are listening to guru stories, I did the Sudarshan Kriya the next day. And it was a game changer, an absolute game changer. Things that felt like they were elephants sitting on my shoulder now were like small little mosquitoes. They couldn't bother me. And at the time that year, I had um, divorced. I had lost a friend to the AIDS epidemic that I write about in the book. It was a very um, challenging time in my life, a lot of uncertainty going on. And I felt there was a hole in my heart after so much loss. And on top of it, I moved from Texas to Colorado, and it was a significant change. So that's a lot of stressors. And I felt there was a hole in my heart from the loss of my marriage and the loss of my friend. And with the first Sudarshan Kriya, that hole for the first time in so long was filled. And now I know it was filled with love. So it was during that course that I saw Gurudev for the first time, during my very first happiness course. And it was interesting how it came to be. The teacher had said that he was going to put on a video, we had VHS back then, of the founder. And that if we would like to watch it during lunch, we were free to do that. Now, everyone got up and left and went right away to get the food, but I didn't. I stayed back out of curiosity, and there was a really small, like a TV about this big, tiny, sitting on the hearth of a fireplace. And when he came on the screen, I just did a double take. That was it. It was like a lightning bolt. His presence, I knew that presence. I knew I knew that face. I knew that voice. It was such an instantaneous connection. It was as though time stood still. And I knew who and what I had been lo looking for my whole life. It was him. I didn't know his name. I didn't know anything about him. But I knew him. And that was it. That was the beginning of the journey with Gurudev, and it's never stopped. So a year later, that was 95, in February, a year later in July, I was finally going to get to meet him. And, you know, don't think I was who I am today. Back then, I was a party girl. I had a glamorous lifestyle. I would jet set off to the Caribbean to play polo on the weekends, have some cocktails. I had a glamorous life. And I also was getting deeper into spirituality. I love the knowledge. I loved how Gurudev was able to give that knowledge in a way that I could really under, not only understand, but I could apply. 
I felt that everybody was so friendly in the art of living and welcoming. And of course, when I would show up to satsang, not that I showed up back in those days every week, but when I did come to satsang and do the long kriya, of course it was just phenomenal. But I was, didn't have both feet firmly on the path is what I'm trying to say until I met him. So what happened is I started, and you can read the details in the book about what went on before that, but when I finally met him was the day when he was coming to Colorado in July of 96 for events that we had organized. And I was even resisting organizing them. I wasn't so sure about it. But I eventually gave in and someone invited me to go to the airport to pick him up. Now, of course, today I would be there in a second. But back then, I just didn't really know who he was and um, other than the, the heart connection. So I go to the airport and he didn't always travel with someone back then. And somehow through different circumstances, I ended up being the only person there with a long stemmed red rose in my hand, all of a sudden thinking, what's it going to be like to meet a guru? I've never met a guru from India. What do I say? Do I speak? Do I not speak? And the jet bridge pulled up. He deplaned in his white flowing silk robes. And my first thought was, wow, he looks really different than on the videos I'd seen. And he walked up to me and just locked eyes with me. He used to call it scanning back in the day, where he can see your past, your present, and your future. Of course, he can do that today, but he had a term for it back then. And he just kept looking into my eyes and he took the rose. We didn't say a word. And after a while, I thought, okay, this is going on for a really long time. I don't know what's happening. And a few moments later, we set off to get into the car that would take him to the venue. And I started making jokes right away um, with him. Just, it was like, Lifting the pause button, and I was instantaneously comfortable with him, cracking jokes with him, and then all of a sudden getting shy again. So in the back of the car, I was back to being shy, and I started getting a feeling. I wasn't saying anything. And normally, I, I like to talk. And he was just chatting so easily with the two devotees in the front who were driving him. And then I thought, I just have to say this. I'm going to say this. Am I going to say this? I'm going to say it. And I did. I said to him, uh, Gurudev, I've been waiting my whole life for my best friend to come. I think it's you. And he laughed and he used to play with his mala back then. He was swinging his mala and he laughed again and he said, <laughs> that's because we're part of a very old gang. And with that, we pulled up to the venue and I was just in another world. I was so high with bliss, so high with Shakti Pot. I didn't know what happened. It was something incredible. And I went up to my room and I had to lay down. I, it, there was so much power, so much beautiful, divine, powerful, divine energy that had come to me. And by the next uh, day, in less than 24 hours, when I finally did get to sit with him for a minute, I was thinking of leaving my career to start my own company, to make a lot of money. And before I could finish, he said, you will be a full-time art of living teacher. And at the time, it was just Mikey, um, Rashri Patel, John Osborne, I think that were full time. I didn't know what it meant. And again, I found myself saying yes. I just said yes. I was ready to go right there and then without even knowing what it was. I just trusted him. And he said, just a little bit more time in your current career, and then I'll call you. And that was what, July and the following February in 98, I went to India for the first time, or two years later, I guess, year and a half, something like that. And I went to India for the first time. And in Rishikesh, I went up to him and I just said, is it time? And he said, it's time. And then I'm like, oh, my God, it's time. What will I do? 
And he said, many things I'll tell you. And I said, Gurudev, you know, I'm the only breadwinner in the family. It's me. I, I'm the worker for myself. He said, I know. You'll see. Everything will be taken care of. And I went home from Rishikesh not knowing how it would be taken care of. How am I going to walk out of a 20-year career? How are my friends and family going to take this? Which they didn't all take it so well. But I had implicit faith in him and such a deep ancient connection that there was simply no choice. And by that September, I left my career and I moved to the German ashram. And 25 years later or so, whatever it is now, 22, 23, since I went full time, I'm still here <laughs> happily. So in this 25 years of beautiful journey, it's a spiritual path. So do you have any experience which you can share with all of us? That spiritual experience we can call? Absolutely. <laughs> Many. So through the years, I would say that spiritual expansion comes in many forms. Obviously, this is a path of the subtle. So much change, so much transformation, spiritual expansion happens at the subtle level. Gur Gurudev is the master of the subtle. So on one hand, the expansion would show up when I was in a situation having to deal with a certain personality, things like that, I noticed how I handled it or how I moved through it was extraordinarily different than how I would have before I was on the path. I began to see that my perception, my observation, and my expression or communication was improving more and more and more and more, and that more grace was coming into my life. Things were easier. I was getting along with people better. If something pushed my button, I didn't hold on to it as long as I did earlier before doing the breath work and the, and the meditation and being in the knowledge and, of course, the grace of the master. So all that was happening like it does for all of us, and I began to notice it more and more. And the, that observation has yet to stop, thank God, in life. There's just so many deep layers to who we are that with self-reflection, I'm finding more and more expansion all the time. So that's one aspect. And then another is, I remember a time, this was really something, and Rishiji and Tanuja were there too. We were in Texas with Gurudev, and he called about 20 of us into a room. And Harry Potter was popular back then. And there's a reason I'm telling you this. So he calls 20 of us into the room. He made sure exactly who we wanted in the room. And without saying anything, we're just sitting there waiting. What is he going to say? What's going to happen? Why did we get called? Oh, we're so excited. One by one, he looked at us and he went like this. Just that, just one flick of his hand and looking at us. And my experience was like in the Harry Potter movie when all of a sudden the whole room from every side expands and becomes enormous. It was complete expansion. And there's no way I can find words to describe that experience other than to tell you, or maybe like Alice in Wonderland when she sips something and all of a sudden everything is expanded and she's, she's giant. But in this case, everything around me was expanded. And then just like that, with the flick of the hand up, he went one by one and closed it. And then each person, one at a time, he said, what was your experience? What was your experience? What was your experience? And I just looked at him and said, total expansion. That was so cool. Can we do it again? It was awesome. And he said that in the future, whenever that is, we won't have to teach three-stage pranayama and the knowledge points will just go like this and people will get it. So I don't know if that means this lifetime, another lifetime, another dimension, but he was able to give us that experience and he was able to close it just like that. 
That was pretty fascinating. And of course, there's so many other experiences of smelling incense at times that I prayed for a sign that he heard my prayer or that he was with me that day. I would smell incense in the oddest places. I might be meditating at my parents' home and they would be sure that I had lit a fire or incense myself because they would smell rose and sandalwood and jasmine. But of course I hadn't lit, lit anything. It was just coming through, through the meditation. And uh, many such experiences like that. One in particular, too, with incense was always the sign for me was when my nephew, who I'm really closest with, my uh, youngest nephew, had a car accident, a terrible car accident. How he and his friends were alive is nothing short of a miracle. And when we had gotten the call that there was an accident, of course, I immediately started doing Om Namah Shivaya's, praying to Gurudev. The next day, um, he was home. The car was completely totaled. Everyone was shaken to their core. And I went with my sister and her husband to the site of the accident. He had actually hit a stanchion by a, a railroad crossing, a thick concrete stanchion so hard with the truck it had bent the concrete it had taken removed the rims of the tires right off the car and obviously it was just sick at the sight of it my precious darling nephew what could have happened but didn't happen now here's the interesting thing that was a new truck that he had gotten and I had been with him all weekend and not gone in it at all but just one hour before the life-threatening accident, I had taken a ride in the truck with him for 10 minutes. And unbeknownst to him or anyone else, I was quietly chanting Om Namah Shivaya in the back just to put some protection in there for him. An hour later, the accident happened. When we got back to the house after seeing the site of the decimated truck, we opened the door. And I tell you, that entire home was absolutely saturated with the smell of incense. It was undeniable. And my sister looked at me because I'm the mystical one in the family. What did you do? Where did this come from? What's going on? And I knew it was Gurudev. I knew it was the blessings being showered upon us. But how do I explain the mystical? And I said, just know that I pray to my people <laughs> and we're a very blessed family and all was well. So many things like that. And um, I can share one more story. So in the beginning, you know, there was some cynicism, some doubt. This was so new and different coming from the West and being with a... Uh, Hindu spiritual leader, even though the heart connection was there, a lot of traditions and learning what it's like to be with a guru, it took some getting used to. And I noticed that when I was traveling with Guru Dev, back then I traveled with him quite a bit, we all did, a small group of us, that whenever he went from one town to another, the sun came out to see him as I mean, it was like that. It could be cloudy and we would cross from Germany to Switzerland and boom, there would be the sun. And then if it got um, cloudy in Luxembourg and we would cross over to Germany, boom, there would be the sun coming out to greet him. I just started noticing this on my own, but I wasn't sure I believed it. I thought maybe it's a coincidence. So 10 years later, I was in Colorado with Gurudev in one small mountain town called Ridgeway, and we were going to go to Tell Telluride, and there was a big snowstorm going on in Telluride, and if you know anything about the Rocky Mountains, they're massive mountains, and when there's a snowstorm, it can be really dangerous to drive on mountain roads, and someone had just slipped in a big SUV in, in their car and said to Gurudev, I don't think you should go from Ridgeway to Telluride. It's dangerous right now. He said, it'll be fine. 
So in the car we went. And when we were about to cross from Ridgeway into Telluride, I heard Gurdjieff say exactly what I had noticed. You know, Patty, whenever I go from one town to another, the sun comes out to greet me. And sure enough, we went from Ridgeway to Telluride, the sun came out. I still had a little doubt. Then we get to Telluride and there's snowstorm, blizzard all the way up. We get there and it's sunny and beautiful. And we walk up to take a chairlift ride to see the beautiful mountains. And when we get there, the young men running the chairlift said, wow, I, you people are so fortunate. This was a terrible blizzard. And just when you arrived, the sun came out. And Guruji looked at me and winked like, wow, okay. This is something now, this is more than a coincidence, but I still had a little doubt. So the next morning, um, early in the morning, we, we were staying uh, somewhere in Ridgeway and we were going from one building to another and it was overcast and cloudy. And Guruji knew that I was still doubting, even without me saying anything. And he looked up at the sky, you could see it was dark, and he said, Patty, watch this. And all of a sudden, he goes like this. Okay, okay, wake up. Come on, let's go. Wake up, wake up. And I literally saw the clouds part and the sun come out. And I looked at him. It was just the two of us. I said, well, that's something. And still a teeny bit of doubt. We walk into the building and he knew it. He said, Patty, when I go in the building, those clouds will cover the sun. I said, okay, let me check this out. And sure enough, he went on to the meeting. I looked through the curtains and the clouds covered the sun because the sun, Ravi, had walked into the building. Beautiful, isn't it? True. And you know, when you just said that you told your sister, I pray to my people, taking the Harry Potter reference, and it, 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 I was feeling like, like she was a muggle and you were a wizard. Yeah. <laughs> I bring to my people. <laughs> but all these experiences, you know, all these miracles are so. Uh, I think only only a person who is walking on this path, spiritual path, and who is with living enlightened master can only get uh, such experience. Yeah. And most importantly, the uh, I think what uh, only a person who is walking on the path can experience is this beautiful emotion of devotion and faith. What is your experience with me? Oh, well, you might make me cry on this one. 